It's my birthday. Well, it isn't really, but it looks like it. Not far from my home is my local ARB outlet. They're all, they are all over Australia. And I popped in a couple of weeks ago and I said, what can you do for my land cruiser? Well, they were not short of answers. And this is by no means their entire catalogue. Let me go through the list very quickly. Protection equipment with bull bar, uh, tray, uh, engine protection, tray, um, wheel arch flares, suspension, BP-51 shock absorbers, and of course, Oman EMU leaf springs, which I consider to be, I've had them on s several of my Land Cruisers. Outstanding product. Uh, of course, the front coils um, are worn a winch. You'll probably agree with me that most of what you see here is, well, fairly ordinary. We've seen it before. However, there are two products here that really excite me. Firstly is this little baby. Air compression tank. It's going to be coupled with the ARB twin compressor, which is very fast. And of course, it'll allow me to inflate my tires very, very quickly. And I'm sure I will find some other uses for compressed air as well. This is a relatively new product in the ARB catalog. But this <coughs> is pretty cool. This is the BP-51 shock absorber system. It's uh, modeled on a racing shock, adjustable in both compression and rebound. And I've been told that this is the dog's Dangly bits. Jason and I have been um, talking about my truck, right? And the suspension configuration. Yep. Now, just a little bit of insight. I decided that I should, instead of just putting in a system or a range of shocks and springs, I would try out a product from one manufacturer. Yep. Okay. And you've recommended this. The BP what have you recommended for me? What we've gone with is the old Manemi BP-51s. Right. Over our uh, previous Nitro Charger sport setup. Yes. Purely on the basis of carrying lots of weight. Right. And making the vehicle drivable. Okay. So the Land Cruiser as a standard vehicle is a great base platform. Trying to make it comfortable and carry lots of weight yes. is very difficult to do. This is James. James is the technician that has been assigned to my truck. Now, I'm sitting here, he's doing the work, three days, wondering what's going on, but I'll tell you something. I don't know if this is terribly fair, but I wanted to find out what his attitude was to interfering with the vehicle's own, you know, systems. And his attitude to soldering and wiring and that kind of thing. And I suppose they were trick questions in a way. Yep. He didn't only answer them correctly. His attitude was right on the money. For example, never drill into the chassis. Find some other way. Land Cruiser is full of captive nuts all over the place, which does make it a little easier in Land Cruiser. Uh, electrical. Crimp. Then solder. Not the other way around protect everything. I've done this a lot and I've seen some good work out of workshops and I've seen some appalling work out of workshops. It's difficult to just hand over my very expensive vehicle and say yeah go and change a whole lot of things. I needed to check it out for myself to be relaxed while the vehicle is out of my workshop. The idea that an accessory causing trouble on a vehicle is very common and he understood that. It was clear to me. I know I'm in good hands. All right, it looks very uh, impressive. It does look impressive, okay. no. Can you explain technically what this is all about? Okay. So, normal situation, you would have a coil spring yep. and a shock absorber, much like this one, that came off the car. Yeah. That's of quite a thin diameter. Okay. Right. To control the compression rebound. But we found that even in an upgraded shock absorber situation, when yes. you're putting a heavier spring in, it, you, you can't have one shock for every customer and every car. Because yeah. every weight application is different. Yes. Um, 
every customer is going to do different things with their vehicle. So what we've done is we developed the BP51s, right. which is a 51mm uh, bypass shock right. with fully adjustable compression and rebound. Right. All right. What that's allowed us to do is put on a nice heavy coil to carry the extra weight of the vehicle, front and rear, and then set up the shock so the, the, the customer's ride and control is top quality. So now I can adjust that ride quality myself with those two yes, adjustments, can. can Yes, I? you can. Okay. We supply a C-spanner with the shocks. Right. Which will basically hook onto each of these notches. Yes. And you can adjust these rings one way or another. Right. These are set out of the box. Right. For a bar and winch application on the front. Right. Okay. And a constant load application in the rear. Right. And then from there you can make your adjustments up and down. Out of the box this vehicle is going to drive tremendously well around town. Slow, slow, even speed. when it's moderately empty. Pretty much, yep. Even oh, with okay. even with a constant spring in the rear, yeah, these shocks will allow the vehicle to be comfortable and compliant, right? Driving in and out of car parks, shopping right. centres, etc. Right. And then when it's full, yes, if they need adjusting, you can adjust them. Um, but when it's full, the suspension will then counter that. Brilliant. That sounds fantastic. My last question is. Aluminium has got a very good reputation for ro ro being a very rugged shock. Yes. But I hear canning stock is a good test for taking out shock absorbers and the best fail. Canning stock route <laughs> is progressively getting harsher on vehicles. Yes. Um, a number of years ago I did the canning stock route twice with two of my vehicles. And I mean then the track was great. I had the dash jumping at least an inch. Now we've seen shock temperatures excess of 400 degrees in, in various applications. Um, anything that is of a lesser quality is, is a failure, not even a quarter away up the track. Um, we have done very extensive testing on these shock absorbers um, to the point where we've actually written off a vehicle. Um, uh, with a suspension system that is still working today. They are completely rebuildable. They come with a three year 60,000k warranty. Right. We have stockists nationally as well as corporate branches nationally who carry parts and have the ability to send them away to our head office in Melbourne to have them rebuilt if there is a failure. But from our standpoint at this current time we've, we've seen them punished pretty heavily with no failures at all. System. The air system, alrighty. Um, so we fitted a four litre air tank to underneath the vehicle into a space that isn't utilised by anything, anything at all. So we've um, made a bracket, manufactured a bracket up, um, no vibration, no nothing. So good clearance. Good clearance. Good clearance around it. Yep. Um, run our new ARB braided airline. So you can use uh, fittings wherever you want, you can place them wherever you need. Um, so in this case we've placed one at the front and one at the back. So we've got one here and we've got one. We discussed this, there it is there, great great location, good. So we've mounted, mounted it up behind the yeah, bar. Yeah, it's nice and protected. Uh, so you don't get any stone yeah. Yeah. or bugs or mud or anything yeah. like that. Is there a there. plug I can put in there, rubber plug? No, there's not, but there's one on the market that you can buy. I'll buy something. I might buy something yeah, for the can. back as well. It's going to get a lot of dust in it. A lot of so. people use door stops. Door, st door stop over the end of it. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, yep. that makes sense. Okay. Um, so all the braided line running from the front to the back doesn't actually touch the chassis at any point, and there's no rub points at all. Um, the reason we do that is for vibration and also rubbing through brake lines and fuel lines. When, when you're in the bush, that's the last thing you want. Okay. Ideally, you use captive nuts. So, Toyota have kindly put captive nuts all the way down the chassis. So, if you can utilise captive nuts or anything that factory bolted and bolt to that, it's a lot better. Instead of drilling a nice hole in the side of your chassis that can rust. Yeah. So, uh, okay, rear shocks. Um, oh, those are nicely out of the way. That's great. Like different products on the market where you have to actually make your own mounts, ARB 
manufacture everything that you need to fit the shock absorber to the car. Another good thing that we've found we've been doing a lot is marking our bolts. So when you're in the bush and you hear a knock or a rattle or anything like that, you can do a quick visually, visual check of all your suspension components and if any of these lines have moved, any of them not in line anymore, you know that's either lost its torque and come loose or something else has gone wrong. Right. So you can keep a keep a quick eye, especially before you do a before you go on a trip, you can check all your bolts, make sure everything's torqued up, ready to go. So. I must tell you, James, I've worked in this business a long time. Your work is very, very good. It's good. Okay, it's good I've to been hear. to a I've had a lot of vehicles fitted by a lot of equipment centers. This is my fourteenth vehicle. Wow. I've yep. done a lot of work myself in the early days. I didn't have any choice. I had to do it myself, okay? Mm -hmm. Your work is exceptional. Well done. Thank you. Excellent. I really appreciate Thank you. it. Pleasure. Very good. Very, very good indeed. <clears throat> so I am leaving ARB with a bull bar, under engine protection, recovery point, wheel flares, compressor and air tank with two outlets, suspension, winch and steering damper. I will be adding fender protection bars very soon. Well, what do you know? It fits. The lift at the moment is over four and a half inches at the back and three and a half inches at the front. And of course, that's not a two inch lift, is it? Springs settle. I'm expecting approximately an inch of settlement at the back, maybe an inch and a half, and a good two inches at the back, if not more, settlement plus, of course, it's totally empty. So the ride at the moment is terrible because, well, there's nothing in the back at all and that's a 600 constant load spring so it's going to need a load to feel comfortable in any way at all uh, the selection of 600 was really jason's he reckoned let's put in 600s loads of vehicle finish building the vehicle and then see if we have oversprung it if we have very easy to Reduce it from 600 constant to a 400 constant by just taking out one of the leaves. They do it often. It's an, it's an easy way of adjusting the springing. I remember doing it in my previous one, but I do not remember that I put in 600s and removed a leaf. In fact, my memory is not that clear on it. So, I've given him the benefit of the doubt. 600s it is. They calculate the front springs by saying, okay, what additional weight are you carrying in the front of the vehicle? More importantly than the rest of the vehicle. In my case, bull bar, a winch, but no battery. And what he's given me is the front springs for the Cruiser 78 with a bull, with a uh, winch and battery. We're pretty close. We might be slightly oversprung in the front, but I don't think it's going to make a big difference to the vehicle's handling. And do I think it's going to finally fit once we do the conversion in this garage? I reckon at the moment it's 60-40 fitting in this garage. It'll come down by approximately two and a half inches and it'll go back up by approximately two and a half inches. It's going to be a close thing.